Okay, so this is Dr. Morton uh, recording the video for uh, the 18th for Logic Design. And I'll put myself on here soon. Okay, sorry. And then I'm going to pop up this and shrink it down. And then maybe I'll shrink this down too. All right. Okay, <clears throat> and I don't need this. So I'll get rid of this. All right, so um, so here's the syllabus. So here we are on uh, uh, week 13, and this is Wednesday, November the 18th. And um, so I'm I've already covered uh, unit 17. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cover unit. Um, Let's see. That's yeah, that that's wrong. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll save that. All right. Uh I obviously have to fix that. Um anyway, so today we're gonna cover uh no. Gosh, I that, that just left over. Okay. Uh, we're going to cover uh, Unit 18, and we're going to look at um, uh, some uh, some uh, three mathematical circuits and just talk about them. Uh, so none of this is going to be on the final exam. Um, and so I it's more for information purposes. And I'm also going to introduce uh, uh, the... Uh, um, SM charts as well, but this this will be a fairly short video because I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I just really want to go over it for completeness sake. Uh, it will come back up in DSD. The same the same uh, the same circuit. The the uh, multiplier circuit comes up in DSD because um, it's the same author. Uh, but um, so maybe that's one reason for covering it. But I I don't find it a particularly useful. Uh, circuit to spend a lot of time on, but it, it, it is illustrative of something. So anyway, all right, that having been said, uh, there we are, and uh, I'm going to, gosh, come on, okay, and maybe I'll move this over there, just, oh, it's driving me crazy, okay, okay, so, so we're going to look at two circuits. There are actually three circuits in the chapter. There's a, there's a serial ladder, a parallel multiplier, and a, sort of a parallel divider. Uh, I'm not going to go over the divider circuit. Read the chapter. That's really all I ask you to do. Just scan through it. You don't have to read every word. Just spend a little time looking at it. Uh, I'm going to go over the serial ladder and the parallel multiplier. And I want you to understand first how these represent um, there, there. It's essentially an iterative, an iterative circuit, but it's modified to be a sequential design. So instead of instead of being an iteration in space where you have several modules lined up, connected all to each other, and these modules uh, then make a multiple bit adder, multiple bit multiplier. Uh, this this uh, the it, the circuit set up so that you actually have a uh, that you have storage devices and you have a clock and you you just sort of tick through it and so anyway we'll go through um, most of the time though our sequential circuits uh, are not really iterations in time if you will so uh, they're really they 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 don't have all that much replication uh, from uh, from step to step and you couldn't reproduce them by uh, creating a bunch of modules and daisy chaining them together all right so here's the here's the adder. So let me sort of explain how this works. Uh, so the way this works is you have. Um, let's see if I can get this. I'm always trying to figure out how. Maybe it's this way. Yeah, I don't know. It's confusing. Yeah. So the way this works is you you have you're at you're going to add two four bit numbers and one carry in and you're going to generate a four-bit sum and a one-bit carry out 
<clears throat> now, partly part of this is done to illustrate the point that we normally divide our sequential designs up in the data path and the control path, or the control circuit, or the control logic. So here's the control circuit, and here's the data path, all this over here. Now, typically, as has been, the, well, this one's, this one's pretty good. This one, I think we have uh, <clears throat> a, pretty good, uh, a pretty good depiction of something that could almost be constructed. Uh, there's still a couple of pieces missing. One of those is um, how we get the uh, four bits of X and the four bits of Y added. Uh, introduced at the beginning, how we initialize everything, and how we uh, initialize the uh, the flip flop. Um, but um, <clears throat> but other than that, it's pretty much a complete circuit. So that part's kind of nice. Okay, here we have a full one bit adder. This takes one bit of carry in here, one bit of y, one bit of x, and it generates one bit of sum and one bit of carry out. The carry in is called CI and the carry out is CI plus one. Whereas uh, the bit of Y is Y sub I, the bit of X is X sub I, and the sum bit is S sub I. Now when we first start, it's gonna be X zero, Y zero. It's gonna be C zero, C one, and S zero. And what happens is we have four bits of X loaded in here high order to low order, four bits of Y loaded in here, high order to low order, and the low order bits Y and the low order bit X are directly fed into this full adder. So uh, there's also a flip-flop down here. This is a D flip-flop. The D input is right here, and the D input comes from the carry out. The, the current state of the flip-flop Q is fed as the carry in to the adder. And every time the uh, every time the clock ticks, then this this flip flop takes whatever's been whatever's coming through the adder on the carry uh, carry one plus one carry i plus one and updates it uh, up, updates this flip flop to now hold the new carry the the carry the, the most recent carry out which now becomes the next carry in. In the, mean, in the meantime, when, when uh, the clock ticks, the SI, the, the sum bit that's being generated, goes around and is shifted in to this 4-bit shift register. So uh, I think I have this set up as an example. So, let's, so we're going to do this. We're going to do, we're going to add 1010 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, somehow we get this loaded in and we get our our D flip flop zeroed out. Now, the first, the lower, the two lower order bits right here, the X zero and Y zero, are always connected to the adder inputs. So is the output from the flip flop. So the flip flop is now seeing a carry in of zero because it's reset. It's seeing a one on Y and a zero on X. And so after a small propagation delay, it generates a one for the sum and a zero for the carry out. This carry out then is presented to D. Now what happens is the clock after this settles sometime a little bit later. The, the clock, so a little bit later the clock ticks. And when the clock ticks, what happens is uh, the shift register with the Y in it shifts. It shifts the Y0 out and into the end to become now the Y3. And Y2 then becomes uh, y th what was Y3 now becomes Y2. What was Y2 becomes Y1. What was Y1 becomes Y0. And Y0 shifts around and becomes Y3. Now the X register is handled differently. Okay, What happens in the X register is that... Uh, that all these bits shift down, but the bit that gets shifted in to the high order bit is the current sum, or this one. So if we look at it, the clock hits, and you can see what happens. Now we have one one zero one here, and one zero zero one, and we uh, we had 
a zero out. So when the clock hit, D was a zero, so we just latched in that zero. Now, uh, we have two ones going in, a zero for the carry in, and that generates a zero for sum and a one for carry out. That one for carry out is now presented to the D flip flop. And when the next clock hits, the registers are going to shift down. The sum bit's going to be carried in here. The carry bit's going to be latched in the flip flop. And we'll have and then these new bits, which are both zero zero, are going to be presented here. So now we have zero zero looking here. This register shifted down. Uh, the one got latched in, and now you're presenting zero zero one as your x, y, and carry in, you're generating a 1 for sum and a 0 for carry out. You're presenting that 0 to the D input, and the 1 is down here on the shift in uh, line, so the next clock, that 1's going to get shifted in here. So we do that, and now we have uh, 1, 0, 1, 1 for, uh, for what was x, and we have 0, 1, 1, 0, which uh, is now the new uh, which was which is um, well it, this is just y shifted <clears throat> and then we now we're presenting uh, in our new value of d that was latched into zero is now we're presenting one zero zero and we get a one for sum and a zero for carry in and now one more shift and we're done okay and here's our sum one one zero one and here's our carry out zero and this is just returned back to the same y so one one zero one is the sum and if we go back and we add we add our original problem together we should add one and zero is one one and one is zero carry your one one plus zero is one and one plus zero is one so one one zero one that's what we that's what we would expect. One one zero one. So that's that's basically it. And uh, that's you've now added uh, you've now added two four bits, and you only used one full adder to do it. But you had to use a shift register, and you had to shift it through a few times, and you had to have one flip flop to hold the carry bit to pass it from the previous uh, addition to the next one. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now, uh, what do we have to do then to make this work with the controller? Well, the controller then has to do a couple of things. It has to uh, it has to have a little um, state graph, and it basically has to go from state S0. Here it waits for the start signal. Once it gets the start signal, it goes here, and uh, it shifts. Uh, here it uh, shifts, and here it shifts. And here it shifts back to zero. And what we have then is uh, our next state, our current state. So we've got a little state graph here, and our shift signal. So until we get the our sorry yeah our shift signal. So until we get as long as start is zero, we just we stay in uh, S zero. When starts one, we go to S one, and then after that, we don't really pay any attention to start. Uh, In S1, we, we, uh, we're we going to go to S2 as our next step, and we're going to output, uh, we're going to output uh, the, yeah, so the shift, um, yes, so so this is, th these, these values here are the start signal. So as long as the start signal is zero, we're going to output zero for shift. But otherwise, all the rest of the time, we're going to output 1 for shift. So every clock edge, we're going to shift. We shift once, twice, three times, and finally back to start. And now we get back to start. Now we're not shifting anymore unless we get a 1 on start. And that's how this little controller works. Now we could do... We can do flip-flop state assignment uh, in straight binary order, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and we can uh, 
set this up like this. Uh, again, this is the start signal, which all it really does is get it started. And then from then on out, it doesn't matter whether the start's a one or a zero. We basically ignore it. The same over here. The only place where it matters is, is in the is in uh, uh, state zero zero. And there we know that uh, that we're going to stay there and we're going to continue to stay at going to zero zero until we get a start. And then we're gonna th then we're going to go to uh, state zero one and then. On every other one, uh, we're going to shift every time from one, from zero to one, and then from one to two, two to three, and then back to zero. All right. So that's our state graph, and it's a melee device because we do have two columns here, even though the start signals sort of, um, yeah. It, it, it doesn't change much once it's once you get a start then it never changes till the next time around and here are k maps and those are the equations all right let's talk a little bit about the the parallel multiplier and then uh and then i'm going to talk about uh state machine charts and then we're going to quit and then i'll come back to state machine charts uh on on friday all right so here's our parallel multiplier now this one is a little bit different uh this one uh, doesn't really uh, uh, have a good explanation for some of its function. What it has is this big 9-bit shift register, and it has a 4-bit adder. So this 4-bit adder is already all set up. This 4-bit adder doesn't really have a carry in, but it does have a uh, carry out. And what's going on with the 4-bit adder, it has presented as one of the add ends the multiple can. And it also has, as one of the one of the add-ins, the uh, these four bits in the shift register, four, five, six, and seven. Now, what we do to get this all ready to go, and none of this circuitry is really described in the diagram. We first uh, load the multiplier in some register here that then holds it and presents it to these lower four bits. Or actually, I guess we. We actually place it in these lower four bits, so never forget the register. We use these lower four bits of this register here, and we load in the multiplier. But the circuitry for that is not really set up. But somewhere we have the multiplier stored, and it's being presented uh, through these wires to these four registers. So that's one thing that's kind of interesting. Uh, and then the next thing we do, we clear these upper bits. that We put zeros in there. And then what we do is um, we we take this low order multiplier bit, and if that's a zero, then we're not gonna add, we're just gonna shift. But if it's a one, we're gonna add and then shift. So the function is either shift or add and shift. And the shift is gonna, is gonna take this eight, this nine bit register and shift it to the right. And we're gonna, and the, the, uh, the ninth bit is just gonna be, uh, well, well, we'll put a zero in there, but it's going to have the carry the carry out written into it from this four bit add. Now the tricky part is that the four bit adder has to take the sum, which are the the four arrows going out here, and put the sum into these registers. Uh, the, at the same time, these registers are presenting uh, the essentially presenting um, the contents of the register to be added to the multiple can if, we, if indeed the multiplier is a one. All right, let me say that again. So we look at the low order bit of the multiplier. If it's a one, we're gonna add. We're gonna add the multiple can to these, to seven, six, five, and four. And then we're gonna store the results in seven, six, five, and four, and the carry out in eight. Now the circuitry for supporting these bi-directional lines and, and none of that really exists okay uh, that's that's sort of mythical here but other than that it's fairly it makes some sense all right and then the load circuitry is not really spelled out either but there is a load command all right so the multiplier is just going to go into these four and the multiple can is going to be somewhere down here presented to this four bit adder all right here over here is our control path Notice that the low order bit, this M, this low order multiplier bit, is mapped over here, and it's the M that goes into the controller. 
there's a start signal and a done signal. And then it, and then we have in addition to that the add signal, the shift signal, and the load signal, and the clock. So those are the those are the signals. The clock's going to drive our controller, and it's going to drive this shift register. Doesn't have to drive the adder because the adder is not a sequential device. It's 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 just a combinational device, and it's just gonna it's just gonna do this add function. Uh, it's going to take whatever the multiple can is, presumably in some register down here being presented, and then digit seven six five four being presented, and it's going to generate a carry out, and it's going to then at some point uh, take these lines, make them bidirectional, and actually put the output values into 7654. And when it does that, uh, it's going to have to somehow not uh, not screw up uh, any of these values. It's, it's going to have to be latched in somehow. Uh, probably we'll have to have buffers or an, an intermediary latch here. But anyway, that, that part of the circuit's not described. All right. And then what happens is everything shifts. So the four bits of the multiplier, the lower order bit shifts out into space and then you have three bits left. You take that low order bit that was here and now it's there and then if it's uh, if it's a one you're going to add and shift. If it's a zero you're just going to shift and we keep doing that until we've stepped it through four times. So let's see if we can make this work. Um, so, so we're going to multiply two things. We're going to multiply uh, one zero zero one by zero one zero one. So that's 8 by 5. So we should get 40 when we're all done. And this is what we should get. Um, well, it's, it's odd. So I guess we get something else. Uh, no, it's 9. My bad. 9 by 5. Uh, so 5 times 9 is 45. So this should be 45. Um, hopefully it is. Um, let me just pause it and check that. Okay, yeah. So you can see uh, that's right. Uh, it, we have we just copy this twice and add them up and this is what we get. We get one 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 zero one one zero one, and that's forty five because it's a one plus uh, uh, four, so that makes five plus eight, that's thirteen plus uh, sixteen plus thirty two, and sixteen and thirty two are uh, forty eight. Uh, no, 45. Well, you, I, I, sorry, let me do it again. I, I did calculate it just to check it. It is correct. Uh, so this is 101 is 5. 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 plus, uh, that would be normally 16, 32. So 13 plus 32 is 45. Okay, now, so here's how it goes. We've got zeros up here. We've got our multiplier here, 0, 1, 0, 1. And we've got our multiple can here. So 5 is here, 9 is there. The first thing we do is we, 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 we do have a 1 here. So we're going we're gonna, to, we're gonna, this adder is going to add up 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. It's going to take this 1, 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. And it's going to add those two, which is going to give it just the same value. Plus then it's going to drop it in here, 1, 0, 0, 1. And when the clock hits, then the shift register is going to shift, and uh, uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah. So, all right. Let's shift then, or the, have the clock edge hit. It's going to tick our controller, and since that. That one, since this is a one, it's definitely going to uh, it's then a, it's going to add, and then it's going to store one zero zero one here, and then it's going to shift. So that's already this is this is already happening. This is happening before the clock. Now the clock hits, and this shifts down. Now we have a zero here, so we don't add. We just shift again, and then uh, now now we've got a one there. So we're going to add and shift. So we're going to add. One zero zero one to zero one one zero zero, or sorry zero one zero zero. Uh, sorry, we're going to add it to yeah zero one zero zero. We're going to add it to one one zero one, and that's going to give us a result of 
a 0, 1, 0, 0. With a carry out, should be a carry out of 1. And then let's see what happens when we sh when the clock hits. We're going to shift. Yeah, I wonder if I made a mistake there. And then we, uh, so now we're down to this digit. And uh, now we just shift. We don't add again. And then now we have a 1. And so then we add again. We add this to, to this. So that's a 3, 3 and 4. And the 1 plus 1, it carries. 1 plus 1 carries. And that gives us, uh, and then the 1. So we have 1, 1, 0, 0. Yeah. And then we're done. And we have the product then, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. It's a little confusing. Um, and part of it is because we have these bi-directional lines here, and it's confusing whether we're adding or whether we're storing the result in here because we kind of do it all on the same clock edge. And, and that's, that's a little squirrely. All right. So this is what the controller looks like. And we can simplify this controller because we have a bunch of identical sections here. And what we notice that, that we have uh, four of these identical sections. Uh, so we have to step it four times. And we either, we either, we wait for the start signal, and then we either, uh, we, and we load on the start signal. So we load up all the registers. Then we either uh, <clears throat> shift only, or we add and shift. And then we either shift only or add and shift, shift only or add and shift, shift only or add and shift, and we're done. All right. So uh, we can simplify this by having by having a little counter K, and then we either we get the start signal, we go here, and we either uh, we either shift or we uh, add and then shift. So this leg we just shift and we don't add. Here we add and then shift. So we take two clock cycles here or just one to just shift. And we keep doing that and each time we add one to K and as long as K isn't, uh, well, we, we count until uh, till we get to four and when we get to four then we make K a one. As long as K is not a one, we keep doing this. When K is a one then, uh, then we, uh, Yeah, then we stop. And so in case of one, we go over here. We and we issue the uh, the uh, yeah we, we issue the done signal and we back to S zero. Okay, and then if you have uh, yeah, so we can go to we can we can wind up over here on a add and a shift or just a shift depending on what the last. Uh, uh, what the last uh, uh, digit in the multiplier is. If it's a 1, we'll do add and shift, and if it's not, we'll just do a shift to our S3. And then from S3 on the next clock edge, we'll see that K is a 1 now, and we'll, so we'll go to, we'll to S0. Uh, All right. So that pretty well lays out the, uh, the approach. Um, then I, what I'll probably do, I may make a short video uh, and just add to this, uh, going through the uh, going through the uh, state uh, the SM charts, I think I'll probably do that. All right, uh, so that's I'm, I think I'm going to close this now because I'm actually out of time. I'll post this and I'll then I'll post another video. So we'll maybe have two videos, uh, two short videos to watch for uh, for uh, Wednesday. All right.